Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to your Raw review. Very little to like on this show. You know, not really a whole lot going on. You had a number one contenders match, but, you know, a little bit of broken mat. We started off with Joe coming to the ring. Um, you know, talking about Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns comes out. They start to brawl. Sheamus and Cesaro jump in. So Ambrose and Seth Rollins come in as well. Um, you know, the okay way to open the show. I am really sick and tired of seeing this interaction of Sheamus and Cesaro. And I, I don't really care about Joe and Roman. I know they're both Samoan and everything, but, you know, one is a fat-looking slob. I mean, Joe looks worse and worse. I'm not even joking. This is not like a tool I'm using to try to be extra funny in these videos and, you know, so I could talk more about purple nurples and shit. No, Joe is getting pretty fucking fat, to say the fucking least. He is a fat motherfucker. And, um, you know, so you look at Roman Reigns, who obviously stays in shape quite well. Um, so you have Roman Reigns looking well above average and Samoa Joe looking well below average. And the, the Ambrose, Rollins, Cesaro, Sheamus shit, this has been going on for like five months already. Can we fucking end it already? For God's sakes, I'm sick of seeing it. Uh, you, you know, how many times are they going to show the same stuff and expect people to want to watch it? Then we had the um, the Vodka girls coming out, Paige and, and Mandy. Uh, they defeated Bailey and Mickey James. Um, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy, they did a little promo um, together. It was a lot like last week, maybe a little bit too similar you know, WWE always has this habit. If they get something good, they have to do the exact same thing the next week. But it was enjoyable. It was funny. They did the laugh off again. It's kind of funny. Like, why would they do the laugh off the second time? I don't want to complain too much because I like it. And I'm happy that we got the broken, woken Matt Hardy. But they, they really did do the same thing two weeks in a row. I mean, they could have moved it beyond that. That blue wall that Matt Hardy's standing in front of. Again, you know, it's just a video vignette. They could have done something in the ring or they could have shot something outside. Um, you know, maybe Matt Hardy um, going to where Bray Wyatt lives. You know, you know, they could have done that, like him going on to the compound or something and made it interesting. But, you know, they went for the same thing that worked last week. They figured if the fans liked it last week, they'll like pretty much the same thing this week. It's not that it was bad, but it, it was the same thing. It was identical. We could have just went back and watched the video of what happened last week. You know, if you were going to pretty much give us the same thing. Um, Enzo and, and Drew were talking backstage. Um, he accidentally mentions Nia Jax's name. This is funny and intriguing. Like I said, I like this. It, kind of uh, hints back to, you know, sports entertainment. Oh, gee golly, what the fuck is that? Probably one of the most entertaining parts of wrestling, of WWE programming. So, you know, we have a little bit of this here, this little romance angle, and I, I think it's funny, you know, they don't have anything for Nia. I mean, I, I, uh, you know, they don't have anything for a monstrous woman. woman. So the thing is, we don't have any other monstrous girls on the roster. Gee, I don't know what to do with her. Okay, you know, beat Dominic, uh, have her beat everybody up. I mean, the, kind of the same thing they did with Awesome Kong back in the day. Um, you, you know, in TNA, it's that hard to try to book this type of shit. I guess it is. Finn Balor defeated Curtis Axel. You know, they don't even know what they want to do with this guy. One year, they, you know, a, a, a year and a half ago, they wanted him to be world champion. Comes back from an injury, then they want him to be intercontinental champion. 
Then they want him to just be another guy on the roster. I think, you know what, he deserves not to be on the roster at all. It is so apparent you look at this guy, and, you know, it's like you listen to the theme music he has. That fits if he's the demon. He's not the demon. He's just boring the shit out of me. You know, so he has this theme song where it sounds like he should be the demon, but he, it's almost like it's lazy. Just, you don't feel like being the demon. It, it's, you know, he just wants to come out and, I like my leather jacket. Remember he wrote that shit in, the, in an interview or on Twitter somewhere? He, he was talking about how much he liked being himself. Well, I hate to tell you, Finn, fuckboy Balor, but you're boring, you know. We don't like you being yourself. And I don't like you at all. I don't like you yourself or when you're the demon. Because when you're the demon, you're just the same boring motherfucker with a literally a fresh new coat of paint. Rollins defeated Sheamus for the thousandth time. You know, w w once again, we're, we're going to have this. How many times are we going to have the same match? Cedric Alexander de um, defeated all the other jobbers in the cruiserweight, so it's the second chance because, you know, Rich Swan is too busy putting his wife in a headlock, um, you know, be being accused of, you know, false imprisonment of his wife. So, you know, they had to come up with a new, uh, new contender for the belt. Um, so he's going to face Drew Gallick ne next week. Backstage, they had more of... Um, Nia Jax flirting with Enzo. And I think that this could be a very interesting storyline, like I said. You know, he was arguing with Gulak because Gulak alluded to the fact that, he, you know, he might take the cruiserweight belt from Enzo. He got upset. They started arguing, and I interrupted. And, you know, this is good TV. It's too bad that one of the best parts on the show only lasted two fucking minutes. Uh, Roman Reigns defeated Cesaro. It was, you know, it was a good match, but most people are going to say here, Oh, Cesaro carried him. It was all Cesaro. You know, at what point in time was the YWC finally just going to admit that Roman Reigns is good? You know, that you might not just like him, but, but he, he's good. It's kind of like how I feel about Rusev. I don't really like the guy. I don't see the appeal of Rusev, but I never say he's bad in the ring. And I say that he deserves better. You know, and I, and I say, like, does he deserve to be there? Yeah, but I don't necessarily like him. So I don't understand why people can't do the same thing with Roman Reigns. He's good. He gets the job done, and he ends up having, you know, if you smarts out the YWC, I want good matches. Well, Roman Reigns gives you good matches. He's been giving you good matches with AJ Styles, Jason Jordan, um, Elias Samson. You know, week after week after week after pay-per-view after pay-per-view, this guy delivers on matches every single fucking time he steps in the ring. He ends up having a good match. So if all you care about is, oh, you know, most of you guys talk about Mike's because you don't even like when they do segments anyway. You know, the, the the minute they did the Woken Matt Hardy thing, Wade Keller is bitching like a little, uh, well, bitch, you know? Bitching like a bitch about entertaining stuff that we haven't seen in a very long time. So if you guys don't even care about promos and segments and entertainment anyway, why do you even care? So you all you care about is in-ring work? Well, Roman Reigns is giving you good in-ring work, you stupid dumb fox. Asuka and uh, Alicia Fox were scheduled to have a match. Um, you know, <laughs> Absolution comes out. They say that they, you know, they beat up uh, Alicia Fox. It, it doesn't even look like she's that injured backstage. She was already on her feet instead of on the floor. Um, so they come down to the ring to, you know, to attack them. But then the, the women's locker room empties out and they all have a big brawl. Uh, you know, this was okay. I don't really get what the whole thing about Asuka was where they were letting her leave the ring and they didn't go to attack her. If they were, at, It looked like they wanted her to join them, 
but then they just decided to throw that out the window and, and not even, you know, go with that storyline. Instead, it was just like, oh, well, you know what? We're just going to have, you know, them. At the they could have done that two weeks in a row. I, I don't get, like, why. Why they did that. Uh, Jason Jordan uh, was talking to Kurt Angle in the back. He wants Samoa Joe. Kurt Angle says he'll face Samoa Joe uh, when he says so and not when Jason Jordan tells him. Jordan gets upset. He calls on Kurt um, and, and walks out of the room. Um, you know, what, what is the deal? I always say this with, with Kurt Angle's office. What is it? Just a video monitor? We don't get to see like a couch or any other angle in his office. So I'm not really too sure like... Like, what kind of an office this really is. It doesn't seem like an office. It just seems like a fucking room with a monitor in it. Um, Samoa Joe defeated Dean Ambrose. Jason Jordan interfered to attack Joe. Um, Joe ended up locking in the Coquina clutch and getting the win anyway. Titus O'Neil was backstage, and um, he inducted Dana Brooke. In, you know, so so this is the thing. You know, we get a bunch of losers into uh, Titus Worldwide. It, it does nothing for careers. You know, first he got that that ah 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 guy, the Tozawa guy in there. Um, you know, Apollo Cruz. Everybody goes nowhere when they go with t Titus Worldwide. So you know, you know that now Dana Brooke could go nowhere. You know, she hasn't been going anywhere, but now she could go even more nowhere than before. Um, so then you had, uh, the best things since sliced bread, they show up, you know, Gallows does that stupid thing, to, Nerd! which I don't even understand how that's supposed to even remotely be funny or, you know, it sounds like that's something that they wanted to catch on as a catchphrase, but nobody wants to catch that. It's kind of like the chlamydia of catchphrases. No, no, it's not going to catch on or nobody wants to catch it. So that's one phrase that they could leave over there on the burnt pile of ashes of failed WWE catchphrases. You, you, you know, like, what, what are they doing with these guys? You know, they had them beat the Hardys one week. Then they're selling merchandise uh, for, sh for WWE shop. And, you know, and now they're just, you know, in a feud now with Titus Worldwide. Braun Strowman walks through. They all get scared. Then we have the match with um, Braun and Kane. The winner is going to go on to face Brock Lesnar for the Royal Rumble. So they go through the trouble of having a no contest. So Braun Strowman plows Kane through the barricade. They both get up. They both pick up steel, uh, steel steps. They clash them together. And so, you know, so obviously now we can tell that it's going to be a triple threat at the Royal Rumble. But if that's the case, why did Braun then drive Kane through the table at the end and stand tall? Wouldn't it have been better if they just went off the air with them brawling? You, you know, that would have been a better end. That way they look like, you know, like Kane actually might stand a chance in this match. Because, you know, it's also a waste. Because we know that Kane is not going to even remotely have a chance to win the Universal title. They're not going to give it to him, obviously. You know, he's still doing the mayor gig. You know, probably after the Royal Rumble, he'll, he'll disappear again from WWE television. But I, I didn't get that ending. If you're going to, you know, go towards the triple threat route, why didn't have Braun Strowman, like, destroy Kane at the end? You know, unless they're not going to do the triple threat, which I would suggest that they not do, especially after him obliterating Kane like that. So there you go, guys. You know, to be perfectly honest, the only thing that really enthralled me was, you know, I would say Woken Math. It was the same thing as the previous week. I mean, let's let's be honest. It wasn't bad, but they repeated a lot of the same stuff. Um, kind of, you know, and and it was the same thing with the laugh off at the end. It's funny, the laugh was a little bit different than the previous. But I mean, like, look, look what we're saying here. The laugh was a little different. 
you know, we're trying to justify it here. I like the Enzo and Nia Jax thing, and that was really about it. That's pretty fucking sad because that those those backstage segments lasted no more than like three, four minutes total. There you go, guys. There's your raw review. Until next time, motherfuckers.